So in this video, we're going to do a little bit of restructuring of our folders here and clean them up and make them more relevant to our environment and to our organization. So when you open DBT for the first time, you have some example models in here. My first DBT model and second one and a YAML schema file. We don't need that, so we're just going to delete it. And so now we're going to create two new folders within the models directory. One's going to be called staging, and one is going to be called marts. So this setup is going to be just a quite a simple two-tier architecture where we've got staging, where we land and rest our raw data, and then marts, where we're formatting and reorganizing data and applying some transformations and business logic to make those more accessible and user-friendly for the downstream data consumers. And so following DBT's best practice guidelines, one way they recommend to organize your staging area is to break it down into data sources. So we're going to create a folder called Jaffle Sharp and click Create. Now if you remember in our staging area, our staging models, stage customer and stage orders, they're all coming from Jaffle Shop. We're actually going to copy that out because now we need to move these stager models into our Jaffle shop folder. To do that, we actually got to rename the models. So it's not dead straightforward. And we've got staging Jaffle shop. So you just apply the fully qualified name, click save, and it moves it then into that area, into that folder. We'll do the same again by renaming the stage orders model. So we've got stage in Jaffle shop stage orders, click save. And then you can see it's moved those files into that folder structure. We've moved our staging models into our stage in Jaffle shop folder, but what about our dim customers model? So what's quite common to see in enterprise class implementation of DBT is within the Marts folder, you'll probably have domain areas within the business or subject areas such as finance, marketing, sales, etc. In this case, we've got a, a common dimension, a dim customers that be used across our uh, business. So in this case, within the Marts folder, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to just call it call. Click create. And then we're going to move our dim customers model in exactly the same way we moved our staging models by renaming it and call it models marts slash core dim customers and that will move into the correct location and so if you remember in our previous video when we were configuring the materialization to tell dbt to actually materialize dim customers as a table we put this conflict block in here now what we want to do at this stage, we're going to actually remove that because we want to apply this configuration at the folder level, at this core folder level. So how we do that is first we're going to remove and cut the config block out of the dim customers model. Tidy that up and just click save. We're then going to go down to the dbt project YAML file. And we're going to tidy this up a bit. We're going to give it a, a name, first of all. And in my case, you can see it's currently called Master and Snowflake from a previous iteration. I'm just going to call it Jaffle Shop. Next, I'm going to scroll down to our model section. And I'm going to replace my underscore new project with Jaffle Shop for the name. And you can see we've got an example piece of configuration here. We're just going to get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Now what we want to do is just reference the file structure we've just created. On. So we're going to type in marts and core. And so now we're working at the core folder level. So any configuration we place in here is going to apply to that folder. So we're going to type in plus materialized 
and table because we want everything to be materialized as the table every model that we place within the core folder to automatically be materialized as a table and that's exactly what we're telling dbt to do here and next we're going to move on to the staging folder and in this case we want everything to be materialized as a view so every model within the staging folder we want it to be a view only so now we're ready to redeploy our model again using dbt run this time we won't see our sample models because we've removed them so we've only got three models to run our two staging models our dimension customers and you can see all three have now passed now let's just check the details of the logs to make sure our configuration worked as expected so we can see stage customers a view stage orders is also a view and let's just check our dim customers now into the details to make sure it got created as a table which it did so our changes uh, to our folder structure as well as moving our configuration and applying at the folder level within the dbt project yaml file makes things a lot easier more efficient obviously when you're dealing with a large number of models it's really important that you get this foundation right from the outset now we've reorganized our folder structure moved our configuration into our dbt project yaml file for the materialization piece there's one more thing i'd like to do as part of this video and we're just going to add a fact orders model in to dbt now you might remember a few weeks ago we had a video regarding configurating dbt for snowflake and we imported some um, data from an, a public Amazon S3 bucket. If you haven't done that yet to bring this data set into Snowflake because we're gonna use a, a Stripe payment table, which I'll show you in a second. I'll put the card in the top corner now so you can go back and uh, just pick up the code and see what we did there. So you can also load that data into Snowflake so you, you can you can follow along with the demo yourself as well so please do that if you haven't done already and then come back to this section of the video and we can we can continue from this point on if you have got the raw.stripe.payment table in snowflake uh, which we'll look at in a second then great we can crack on and that's all good so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a, another stage table in our structure here and to do that we're, we're not actually going to be uh, using the Jaffel shop schema anymore so we don't actually need to create the folder because if we um, add a new file and we give it a fully qualified name in this case we're going to call it stripe because that's the source that we're going to use and we're going to call it stage payments Oops. stage underscore payments dot sql so click create and in doing so, you'll see that dbt automatically creates that folder as part of the uh, fully qualified name. We'll just give it if that folder didn't exist already. So just a, a little bit of a, a little quick hint there to help you create those folders. Now we're going to head over to the Snowflake. and We're just going to look at the table in the raw database in the Stripe schema. And here it is called payment. So let's just have a little look at this table. And you can see the data here we've got a, a key order id uh, the different payment methods if it was a success or failure the amount it was for and when it was created so i'm just going to quickly put together a query which i'll also share with you in the comments of this uh, video that we can use for uh, our dbt model that we've just created so there you go i've just really quickly reorganized that query to select all of the key fields from the payment table and just alias the ctt CTE is payments. We're going to copy that out and we're going to flick back to dbt and add that to our model next. Back into dbt we'll paste our SQL statement which we've just confirmed runs in Snowflake. So there's our stage payment model within dbt ready to go. Now we're going to add a fact orders model to our project in dbt and it's going to go into the Marts core directory. So a new file, fact orders.sql, and we'll create that. 
Okay, so here's my SQL that I've written to create the fact orders table. You can see I'm referencing uh, the orders stage as well as my new payments stage using the reference and the modularity that we introduced in one of our previous videos. I'm then selecting the order ID, payment ID, and the amount and joining those together to create my basic fact orders table. Now notice when I've tried to run this initially, it gives me an error because it tells me my stage payment um, view or table or database object, depending on how I've materialized it, doesn't, uh, doesn't exist or not authorized. That's because I haven't actually deployed that stage payment model to the database yet. So what I need to do is go to dbt run, use the slash m switch again to uh, give it my model name so I can target a particular model and you can see then I specified stage payment it's picked up one model and it's created my view now I'm able to execute my fact orders model within dbt to check it all it comes back as I anticipate and it does so now I can run the fact orders model on its own and deploy the object to Snowflake. There's my one model queued, and you can see it's passed. You can also see it's created and materialized a table because I've placed it in the folder, which I've told dbt everything in that folder, create it as a table and materialize it um, as a table, not as a view. And so that looks all good. So now we've created our fact orders table and deployed that to Snowflake as long as for stage payment table as well. So we went through quite a lot in this video. It does seem quite basic, but it only is once you know exactly what you're doing. We've restructured our folders. We've placed our models in the right place within there using the dbt project YAML file, how to materialize and apply configuration at the individual folder level rather than config blocks in the SQL code. In our next video, we'll move on to talk about sources. In our stage tables, you can see that we've hard coded where the source actually lives. We probably want to change that up a bit and make it more dynamic uh, to cater for any changes in the future as well. So we'll get into sources in the next video. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're getting value from these videos. Uh, please like and subscribe. New videos coming soon.